stuck with it. And I also thought, well, when it comes to seniors, you know, there aren't that many seniors that are rushing off to the river or <laughs> to Vegas. We kind of take life at a slower pace. And if we want to go, we can go during the week. We don't have to go on a, on a busy holiday weekend. Volunteering is not really understood very well by most people. Volunteering is, in fact, the best medicine that we have for aging. Because what we've been talking about so far are losses. Each week we have brought up another category of loss that we have when we're aging. And the best medicine for all of these losses, and I've got them listed for you, loss of kingdom, depression, loneliness, mental sharpness, physical movement, loss of connection with younger people. The best medicine we have for all of those losses is volunteering. Because volunteering will do so much for you as an aging person to bring you back into focus in life. It's just absolutely enormous in its blessings to you. And so what I'm going to do today is present the results of my research into volunteering in Redlands, giving 15 opportunities to volunteer. And the, and the, and the one, uh, one I'm going to start with is therapy dogs. And if you'd like to come up, uh, I didn't, it should be listed the therapy dogs of the Inland Empire. Yeah, Inland Empire therapy dogs. I am Adrienne Castle, and I volunteer with the Inland Empire Therapy Dogs. Oh, is that better? Um, and we're part of a national organization. We're a local chapter of Bright and Beautiful Therapy Dogs. And um, I volunteer with my four-year-old miniature poodle, Nikki. We, and any dog can do this if it's a friendly, well-trained dog and enjoys meeting strangers, which my dog loves to do. Um, we go to Loma Linda University Hospital every week, and we visit patients and staff and are part of events at the hospital. Um, we visit patients at Blossom Grove Memory Care Nursing Home, and that's a very rewarding place to go because uh, the patients, due to their memory issues, are restricted to being in that facility. And sometimes it, it can be depressing to them, but they see the dogs come and visit with the dogs and it brings back memories of dogs they had in their life. And uh, it's just a really wonderful thing to do. Um, there's, we also have a program called READ where the dogs will lie down and students who are struggling to learn to read will read to a non-judgmental dog. We visit students in, in uh, schools from kindergarten through university level for a variety of different programs that they have. Um, uh, research has shown that the fair meeting with a friendly dog is actually uh, very good for people's blood pressure, their immune system. It brings people out of their shells. It can motivate them. And it's just such a worthwhile thing for people who enjoy being with dogs. Um, well, we've been volunteering for about a year and a half. And my dog does a lot of tricks. So often we bring a lot of amusement to the patients and people we visit, but sometimes the visits are more subdued and they can even be poignant and kind of heartbreaking at times. But I have to say it's always very, very rewarding for us to do. Thanks. Thank you. And I've, I've got the card here for Inland Empire Therapy Dogs, even though it's not listed. It, I'll have it up here after the program if you're interested in seeing it. 
Uh, now, the next one I have up is volunteering at the Redland Public Library. Uh, and um, that is a, a basically a literacy program, although they, they do need some help in other areas. So we have two representatives from uh, the library to come up and tell us about the work there. And in the front is Diane Shimoto, who uh, is the head of the literacy program. And then we have Jane, who is actually a volunteer in it. And looks like she has brought cards too. Oh, okay. I'm the adult literacy coordinator with the Redlands Adult Literacy Program, and most of our volunteer tutors are retired. And I was a volunteer tutor for four and a half years before I took the job, and I found it extremely fulfilling. You change the life of the person that you're working with by teaching them reading and writing skills. Some people come to our program in tears because they can't read a book with their six-year-old who's learning to read in first grade. Other people are having trouble getting into college or just functioning in life, and teaching them how to read will really make a difference. And one of our wonderful tutors is Jane Henry, and she'll tell you a little bit about tutoring. Well, tutoring is both a blessing to the tutor and to the learner. In addition to teaching some, giving somebody the confidence to read, you build a sense of community when you help another person. My learner, immigrated from Pakistan. She and her husband brought their children to the United States so that their daughters could go to school. She was not allowed to go to school and did not know how to read. So she came and she said, now it's my turn. So we worked together a long time. We learned to respect each other's cultures and religions and we became great friends. She made tremendous progress. She, I'm sure she was dyslexic, because I know they read from right to left and read from left to right. We, and, but she had difficulties, but she hung in there. And it's a true blessing to help someone who really wants to learn to read. And I'll share that a couple years ago, I asked Jane's learner, what are you grateful for? And she said, thanks to the literacy program, I can read. <laughs> huge. Um, we'll do tutor orientation on August 22nd, and I'll leave some materials here if anyone's interested. All right. So therapy dogs enrich the lives of Alzheimer's patients and ill patients, and the adult literacy program is enriching the lives of just regular people who uh, have a problem with reading and can learn to read. Then the, I have, the, next is the American Red Cross. And of course, they're well known for their help in disaster aids. They have disaster teams. Uh, it's not easy to uh, come up with uh, much more information than that. I tried online, I placed telephone calls and got no response. But is there anyone here who has volunteered with the Red Cross? Well, they're located in Redlands and also in San Bernardino and, of course, in Riverside. Uh, then we have HELP. Uh, HELP uh, packages food uh, for the needy and delivers it. And they run uh, also a store. And I have um, a, statement of, uh, a statement from someone who is active in HELP, Charlie Fries, who many of you know. And he says that uh, volunteering has been a part of my life because my par of my parents, my parents introduced me to volunteering because among other reasons, one should give back for all the blessings that you've had in your life and it's the right thing to do. Whether you volunteer for a few hours a day or a few days a week or a month, just do it. Your pay is fellowship and friendship that you never knew existed. So he's, uh, he goes on to talk about uh, volunteering at HELP. Uh, many, in many cases, strangers become friends. It really makes no difference which organization you choose. Uh, just jump in with both feet. Today, I volunteer with just one organization, HELP, which stands for Hope, Empathy, Love, and Prayer. We are a food distribution organization located in Banning 
we have a thrift store where I volunteer four days a week, 8.30 to 12.30. Although no one receives any pay, we have a large group of volunteers who are paid with thanks and good wishes every day. Thank you, Charlie. Volunteering at the Senior Center. Volunteers are needed to uh, join the Senior Activities Board and for other tasks there as well. And it just interrupt me if you are volunteering any of these places. Volunteering at Micah House for their after school program, uh, another opportunity to work with and tutor children in the local area. And then, we have Helping Hands Pantry, uh, preparing, packaging food, and delivering it to the needy. You can volunteer with food at home by joining uh, Goodness Cakes. You can bake cakes at home. These are birthday cakes. And you're given a name, and you bake a cake for that person, and then you deliver it. Or you can arrange for someone else to have it, to have it delivered. You don't have to deliver it. But it's a great way to bring some joy into someone's life. Here's a unique one in Redlands for those who are more politically active, volunteering at the climate lobby. And they will train you to, uh, to be, how to be active in the climate lobby, how to write letters, who to contact, and how to work on climate change if you feel strongly about that. Volunteering at Make-A-Wish Foundation, we've all heard of Make-A-Wish. It's a place where children who are critically ill can have a wish fulfilled, like to go to Disneyland or, or something like that. And they need volunteers who work in pairs to go and interview these children and find out what would be an attainable uh, wish for them in their present situation. And you bring a lot of joy into children's lives and each one of these jobs we talk about is not for everyone. I think this job particularly takes a special gift to be able to handle that. Volunteering at the Blessing Center in Hannah's House of Hope. And that, uh, Hannah's House of Hope is for uh, mothers who uh, are homeless mostly and also for children that are homeless. So you're working with people who really need help. And it's, it's very practical, the things that you do there. Volunteering at the Family Service Association of Redlands, and this, again, is dealing with um, needy community members. And sometimes it's around issues of food or transportation or helping them to, um, get, uh, to groom themselves to go for a job interview, uh, giving them hints on how to conduct themselves. Volunteering at the Redlands Police Department. Uh, we've all heard of the Citizens Patrol, and that's a small group of dedicated people who go out in their car to aid uh, the citizenry. Uh, and also, they need volunteers in the police department itself to do clerical work. Sometimes it's just answering the telephone. Uh, sometimes it's filing, uh, those kinds of activities. Then we have one of the largest volunteer organizations in our town, probably the largest, the Redlands Community Hospital. There are over 40 jobs that you could do as a volunteer at RCH. Uh, these um, can be done by people even in wheelchairs. Most shifts are either 8 to 12 in the, at noon or noon to 4 during the week. Uh, typically, volunteers select one or two days a week that fits their schedule. They need volunteers for their blood drives. Those are more sporadic, and the hours could be longer. The recruitment process includes uh, a number of steps, a volunteer application, and I have 10 applications with me here in the front row. If you should want one, it's, it's all ready for you. A background check, health clearance, general orientation, and RCH provides all of these who are accepted into the program. Uh, there's health clearances, uh, vaccinations, a whole lot of things that you have to go through. 
They need help in the gift shop. It's run by volunteers. Uh, I mentioned the blood drive, clerical support in, in the various offices, answering phones, hospice visitors, uh, doing filing and computer work, uh, escorts to uh, get people to the right department, manning the, the information desk, goodwill ambassador greeter, uh, they remain seated in the greeter's chair at the front of the hospital, and so that can be done from a wheelchair. Mail delivery, mother and baby services, and even quilters. So there's something for everyone. And you can call Julie if you're interested. We've had a number of our members do various things at the hospital. Is there anyone who wants to share something that they did at the hospital as a volunteer? And then volunteering at Redlands Unified School District. Uh, volunteers are needed to uh, tutor students in reading, math, science. Some schools have a garden and they, they need garden workers. It sounds more attainable than saying master gardeners because I don't know who would admit to being a master gardener. I just had some flowers die and I'm not a master gardener. Uh, you could call any school principal and talk to them about volunteering on their campus so you can choose the school right in your neighborhood. Volunteers are needed to work with adapted physical uh, education students who are mentally and physically challenged. And of course, that's not for everyone either. So now we, uh, who can speak to, uh, to that for us? Uh, volunteering in the, in the schools. Is there anyone who's done that? Do you have other volunteering experiences that you could share maybe that aren't listed here that you did perhaps at another time? Um, yes. It's a lot of fun. Oh, okay. TV people, if you're watching. Meals on Wheels, you have a choice of day you want to do it. It's all run out of the back side of the Methodist Church now because the Jocelyn Senior Center has been closed. But it's a lot of fun. Monty lets me get, tell him how to drive so because of the direction. So we get along pretty well. So Craig asked me to just talk a little bit about volunteering. The I've, I'm a product of my father. He volunteered a lot and still does. Um, so it kind of was instilled in me that you need to give back. So the organizations that I uh, serve as a board member on, the reason I do it is twofold. One, I have to feel like I'm called to the organization or I can't do it because I know it's going to take a commitment of time and time away from Joyce and the, and the family. So there has to be that commitment, number one. And then number two, I do it for the relationships. Because on all these boards I serve on, you don't get paid. So you don't need to get a big head. You're just a volunteer. <laughs> but all of the other people on that board are the same way. And so now you're equal and you're even. And oftentimes those relationships I can carry over to another organization that that person has influence or knowledge that we can bring over here and apply to that organization. So it's a, a very rewarding experience. I do have a day job, um, and it can be stressful. And oftentimes, the volunteer work allows me to transition back to a more normal uh, pattern of life. So anyway, that's why I do it. Here's the organizations that I'm serving on the board right now. There's six. Uh, here at the church, I work for Tom. I'm the vice moderator. SB Sarah, which is the county pension, uh, the $14 billion pension that covers the 42,000 county employees, and I'm chair, uh, chair of the investment committee. Uh, Redlands Community Hospital, I'm chair of the investment committee. Inland Empire Community Foundation, that's an 85-year-old, two county, about $100 million endowment that supports both counties. I'm chair of the investment committee. You're starting to see a pattern here. Um, Children's Fund does not have an investment committee. I'm chair of the finance committee, and I'm on the audit committee. And then the Mahalo Education Foundation back in the, uh, my hometown of the mountains. So again, the relationships I've developed over the years uh, are, have been really great for Joyce, for myself. And I do really feel 
call to these. I wish there weren't as many, frankly, but um, I'll keep doing it until I'm... And you're not even retired. Not quite. <laughs> That's marvelous. What a great thing. Very, very good. Well, okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, as some of you may know, I do a lot of theater, and you might say, well, I could never get on stage and act. That's just not my thing. But for each of us uh, in a play that's on stage, there's probably a half a dozen people that support us uh, in many different ways because any theater is always looking for people who are willing to build sets and work on them. I see a fellow set builder here today. Uh, that's one aspect, costuming. Uh, any play has a variety of costumes and you just don't find a lot of the stuff, especially if something has a period setting or has some kind of unusual setting. It's, uh, we often shop at thrift stores, but also we also shop at thrift stores and then modify things uh, tremendously, so that's a good opportunity for seamstresses. And so there are, those are just a couple, oh, one other area that I should mention. Uh, any play is going to require a set, and it's going to be a set that's going to be built and then decorated, so people who can slap paint on a wall or hammer a nail into a, a board to put up a set can find opportunities to work in a theater setting. For those of us who are aging, it's absolutely essential that we do something. You can't just stay at home. You've got to get involved with something. And volunteering is such a great exercise for us because it offers us so much that we can't get in any other way. I remember, you know, as, as a young pastor, this older member of the church coming to me because he was so depressed. And he was depressed because he was retired and he had nothing to do. And he said, you know, he said, I'm not good for anybody anymore. And oh, how wrong he was. All he had to do was get involved in some retire, you know, some, some volunteer program for retired folks. And I tell you, it just changes your whole life because it gives you, uh, it gives you goals, it gives you connections, it gives you what you need to live happily. On TV, I can't get over all of the ads now for prescription medicine that you can't buy but your doctor can order. And in every one of those ads, it's the same thing. It shows the person who took the pill, then walking in the park with her friends and going to a flower show and riding her bicycle. And the message is that if you take this pill, you'll have a happy life. And that's the message over and over again. It keeps repeating itself, every ad. Well, I tell you, if you're retired, if you get involved in volunteering, you'll have a happy life. It's just that simple. And I know sometimes it's hard for us to do because it gets us out of our shell. I mean, we have to leave the safety of our home. We have to meet strangers and do strange things. But those things, those strangers become friends. And those strange things become regular things. And suddenly we found a new life for ourselves because it gives us what we need to deal with all of the losses that we undertake. So next time is not for six weeks because that's the way my schedule goes. And the 18th of August, it'll be a hot Sunday in Redlands, California. And we're going to talk about the loss of intimacy and the changes in intimacy that happen as we age. Not often talked about in churches, or anywhere else as far as that goes. It's just kind of ignored. Uh, but I think that, that we can learn by putting our heads together and sharing uh, on this topic and, and making some discoveries along the way of steps that we can take to help us with loss of intimacy. Is there anyone else that wants to say anything? Yes. I just have a question. Um, 
Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, my question is, I'm not, I'm not retired yet, but it's, it's approaching. And, um, and I realize how important volunteering is. And I actually did it when I moved to this community. And um, it, it just, it was so helpful for all the reasons you said, even though I was working. But my question is, um, I've been thinking about what I'm gonna do after I retire. And um, I have heard that um, it's best to wait six months to a year before you jump into volunteering and you know, not to get yourself too overwhelmed. So I was wondering what your thoughts were on that. Thank you. Well, I like the last part about not being overwhelmed. You know, that's a really highly individual question. If you're what some politicians call a high energy person, you may need to get involved right after, after you retire. The first thing you'll notice when you retire is that you don't have to get up in the morning anymore. And the first thing that men tend to notice is they don't have to drive the car through that traffic to work anymore. But it's, very, it's a very great change. And those first few months are, are an adjustment time. And so it just depends on you. And, and I, I think that it's good advice that no matter when you decide to start volunteering, that you do it step by step. Don't just start, don't sign up for be on five boards the first month. Just start step by step and, and see how it goes. And that, then I think it, it's fine. And it, that's kind of what we do in life, isn't it? I mean, we kind of regulate ourselves and no matter if you're gonna, what, I mean, if you're 38 and you decide you're gonna start an exercise program, which is a good idea at 38, uh, you know, you use the same common sense. You start in steps. You don't just go out and decide, I'm going to run five miles today. You start by running around the block and build up from that. So it's just good common sense. But that's an excellent question. And you don't look like your retirement age either. So there. <laughs> Anyone else like a compliment? I mean, you have something to say? <laughs> yeah. I think oft times uh, it's... When you look at, first off, I'm a Christian. That's who I am after to this morning's sermon. Who are you? I am a Christian. And looking around to see what needs to be done around me is part of who I am. I think of Sue starting the exercise class here at church. Looking to the church to see what needs to be done I'm sure there's clerical work that needs to be done that we could be very helpful with. There are things that have uh, had to be laid aside because of the pandemic, um, things that have uh, not been brought back into, uh, well, like the book club that we started up again. There are things that we just need to look around and see where we can be used and not just in our own little pocket. And I think that's what volunteering in the other circles does for us. We need to just look outside where we are needed. Yes, I was taken by John's uh, uh, sermon as well. That's how we started our seminar. They were talking about who are you, who am I? And we wrote it out and came up with a description of ourselves where we couldn't say what we did in life and what our job was. Um, this church, it's, it's, I don't think it's ever been announced, but I'll proclaim it. This church has the nicest restrooms of any church in town. <laughs> There's no church that has restrooms like ours. It's a joy to go into any one of them. And how can that be when some of them are so old, like over here, you know, this one over here, it's, it's as old as the hills, it's older than I am. And it's, it's wonderful the way it's decorated and it's painted and smells nice. That's the result of one person, a volunteer, who did that. Now, that's incredible that she made this donation 
something that she could do, a highly educated woman who gave us these beautiful restrooms. So you can volunteer right here at church, and there's lots of opportunities. Just read the bulletin on the Sunday. Anyone want to share anything else? Well, feel free to use one of the beautiful restrooms, or <laughs> you can come up here. We have uh, information on the adult literacy program up here for you, hospital applications if you're interested, and information on the therapy dog program. Thank you.